Anyone who is condescending, arrogant, insensitive, critical, backbiting, self-indulged, harsh, disrespectful, inconsiderate, vulgar, irreverent, conceited in one's speech, in one's attitudes, or in one's body language. All of that would be humaza and lumaza. I know it's recorded, you'll get it eventually. Okay. Now we come to the next ayah. Alladhi jama'a malan wa'addadahu. The first thing to explore is what's the connection between these two things? What's the connection between this attribute of heart being hurtful to other people and the second one is de dedicated to one concept? Shallow translation, the one who gathered wealth and counted it. That's the shallow translation. So what's the connection between the one who's always critical of people and the one who's gathering wealth? When the one who's always gathering wealth doesn't give any of it, so gets criticized by the people as being greedy. And he doesn't like being criticized. And the best defense is offense. Right? So before he can get he can get to hear from someone, you should be more charitable, you should worry about there are other things to worry about in life than money. Before he gets to hear that criticism, what does he constantly do? Constantly describing others' flaws, engaged in being humaza or lumaza, or both rather, even even worse, being engaged in both, covering his own flaw of being indulged in his own wealth or her own wealth. This is the first thing. The other thing here is, remember I said, when a person doesn't have a higher goal in life, they get lost in trivial pursuits? Well, one trivial pursuit was the first ayah, finding flaws in people. What's the other trivial pursuit? Gathering wealth and constantly, constantly making plans for the future. And these people, they become so narrow-minded, when you start worrying about your deen and less about saving your money, you know what they say to you? Think about your future. Right? And the, the ironic thing is, you are thinking about your future. <laughs> They're the ones who are not thinking about your future. And they think, think long term. And guess what? The irony is, they're the ones thinking short term. You know, what are you going to do in the next 10 years? Dude, what are we going to do for the next thousand years in our grave? What's going to happen after we get out? That's long term thinking. <laughs> this isn't long term thinking. But their minds get wrapped around this, this idea and this becomes their whole world view. So he's saying, how much are you going to gather anyway? Your wealth compared to the wealth that is out there in the world is nothing. So what is it that you're so proud of? It's haqeer. فَكَيْفَ يَلِيقُ بِهِ أَنْ يَفْتَخِرُ بِذَلِكَ الْقَلِيلِ How can it be for anyone of intellect that be, they be proud of something so minuscule? The other, the other way, look, some ulama looked at it, they said, فَمَا الْحَيَاةُ no, فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلِ فِي سُرُوتِ التَّوْبَةِ The entire utility of worldly life when compared to the next is nothing but a little. This is what you're proud of? This is really what you have to, you know, that you're so uh, full of yourself about. Compare this to his sa this same person's attitude on the Day of Judgment. Allah says, on the Day of Judgment, nothing will benefit him. Even if he offers the weight of the entire planet Earth in gold, and tried to exchange that for his own salvation, gave that away, it wouldn't, it wouldn't benefit him. So what is he so proud of? It doesn't make any sense. And yakun al-murad, it can also mean that the meaning here is minhu ta'zim ay malun malan balagha fil khabth wal fasad aqsa nihayat. Also means that alladhi this this dham of it illustrates that he went by and and tried to gather wealth, whether those means be filthy or corrupt. Now compare this to the Muslim mind. The Muslim mind is, you know, you have an old man who's already got a foot in the grave and he's planting a seed in the ground for a tree to grow. And you ask him, you're not going to be, you're not going to live long enough for this tree to grow. And he says, well, it will give somebody shade one day, sadaqa jariya for me. This is the mind of the Muslim, right? It's, that's what it's supposed to be. We think about how the future will be benefited. Not, you know, live, eat, sleep, drink and die. That's it, you know. This is the, this is the, the reversal of thought. And that's really, when we read this stuff, we shouldn't just think about what's happening you know, a millennium and a half ago, this is, these are realities of our time. These are, these are serious problems of our time. And unfortunately, just because we're Muslim, doesn't mean that we haven't been engrossed in the deepest depths of the black greed of capitalism. We ourselves have become really nasty capitalists ourselves. And we don't think about the greater good and serving society and building the kinds of institutions, right? We've become people of Allah, may Allah protect us from it and get us out of this mess. So the first ayah is dedicated towards his attitude against others and the second is his occupation for himself. What is he occupied with himself? Interestingly, know that what is expected of the human being is the exact opposite. You are supposed to be the best to others and you're supposed to not keep wealth for yourself but be giving. 
What is expected of you is the exact opposite of the behavior being described. So addada to count and place to count over and over again to keep, to keep track of the count and it can be also be it can also be like I said associated with preparation preparing for future need. That's a deep question to ask. When you ask, you know, why do you want money to a child? They say, I don't know. I might want something later. <laughs> right? But ask yourself the difficult question, why does humanity run after wealth? If the food is on the plate today, you stop worrying about today, you start worrying about tomorrow. In other words, akhlada doesn't just mean eternal life. It means that which will continue to sustain him endlessly. In other words, he's worried that if he doesn't have savings, he, will, he or she will cease to exist. You know, people become suicidal when, there's, when their stock account, you know, they drops, right? Their investment accounts went to zero and they became suicidal because they associated surviving with savings. Not with food they have right now, but the food they were saving for tomorrow. This is part of the meaning of akhlada. He doesn't just think he'll live forever, but he thinks that his future needs, this is from ikhlad, from khulud, his future needs are taken care of because he or she has savings, because they have these savings. So, this, uh, and, and by the way, this, this is tied to the idea of building monuments. You know, people, they want to be known for things. And one of the things people get known for is wealth. And you know, at, at the end of people's lives, if they don't believe in an afterlife, they don't give it in sadaqah, they give in their own form of sadaqah. They'll donate to a charity or to a hospital, to a university, so a monument will be named after them. Right? So this is the only thing of them that will live on. So they're making their wealth a means by them to which by, by means of which they can live on through these empty monuments, this rock and metal or whatever is used to make those monuments. This concept is also dis talked about in the Quran. When the nation of Hud is mentioned, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَتَتَّخِذُونَ مَصَانِعَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَخْلُدُونَ تَخْلُدُونَ You make statues so you can live forever? What does that have to do with living forever? No, their name, their legacy, their memory will live forever. Is this your reason for building these unnecessary monuments? His quest, his desire for eternity, for living eternally. Allah put that desire inside the human being. If that desire is not channeled towards seeking Jannah, it will be channeled towards getting your wealth and building monuments. And that's what will channel. But it, the desire is there. Like Allah put the desire inside us to, to appreciate beautiful things. And if you don't appreciate the beautiful recitation of Quran, you will become obsessed with music. The desire is there. But it's just got, it's going to get channeled. It's going to go in one direction or the other. You understand? So that's what we're learning here. So the people who don't, and by the way, this is the comment of one of my teachers, Dr. Isra Ahmed, he said about this, uh, this surah, he said that there are two, tempt two temptations of dunya. It's money and children usually that are talked about in the Quran. Right? at takathur fil amwali wal awlad. Obviously this surah is, a, is talking which one? Mal. Mal, not awlad. And he made a comment about that, just his own observation. He said, in my own life I have noticed the people who don't have children, they become even more obsessed with wealth. If they don't have kids, then you, if you have kids, you have two concerns. But if you have, don't have kids, you become overly concerned with wealth and counting money. And if you tell people who don't have kids who become overindulged in wealth, why don't you have kids? What's the number one reason they give you? <laughs> wealth. I don't know if you can afford it. I don't know if, you know, we have enough for ourselves. We don't know if we have enough for a child. It might cramp our style or our, you know, our, our future plans, etc. So now in tafsir of this, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ the wealth will increase his false hopes. And it will give him wishful thoughts or fortify his wishful thoughts that are far away. Until it becomes a means by which he gets deeper and deeper into his heedlessness and extends his false hopes. He assumes his wealth will leave him remaining in this world as though he won't die. It also implies in the next life that he thinks, this is a very important mentality by the way, there are people today that believe because Allah gave them so much here, that they will be doing pretty well over there. Hey, Allah loves me so much here, He's obviously taking care of me here, so I can only expect better when I go. But this is actually a real mentality. It's at the heart, by the way, of many a, pro a, a Protestant factions of Christianity. They actually, they will tell you in the sermon, God wants you to go get that promotion. He wants you to make that extra money. He wants you to get that second mortgage. Because He loves you. Right? Make more and that will be a sign that Allah loves you more.
This is actually mentioned in the Quran in the story of the two gardeners in Surah Al-Kahf. The guy thinks he's got a better garden, so he figures, وَمَا أَظُنُّ سَاعَةَ قَائِمَةً I don't think the hour is ever going to establish against me. Even if it was returned to my master, I would find better return over there than here. Allah has only given me dunya stuff here, He'll give me akhirah stuff there. You're poor here, will probably be poor over there too. That was his mentality. And by the way, this mentality, believe it or not, has seeped into the minds of many Muslims. They will think Allah is taking, Allah loves me so much. He, we, we have a beautiful home, we have a great job, business is great. Clearly Allah loves us. He sees something in us, He didn't see in other people. So why should we worry? Allah is really taking care of us. Well, know that these things that we thank Allah for, more than anything else, they are a test. For some people their poverty is a test, for other people their wealth is a test. But they're both a test. None of them are, it doesn't put you in a superior position to the other. So I'm not saying richer people are in a worse position and poorer people are in a better position. But understand both are being tested. Both of them are being tested. May Allah help us understand our test and live, uh, live a life that successfully passes that test.